Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Patricia Cauley with the CME Group. I'd like to call out my colleague, James Oliver, who's here from London. He's the uh, medals director there. And I think I've got uh, my colleague on the education side, also John Connolly, that's sitting with us. So I'm feeling kind of bad because I'm the fifth presenter and I've got a lot more slides to show you. So I'm hoping this will be interesting for you. Because I you know, was preparing for this uh, presentation and did a lot of public speaking. They always tell you that it's your the first or couple of slides that make an impression and then the rest is kind of blah, blah, blah. And then you've got you know, the minute at the end to, to make a significant impression as well. So I'm gonna try to go with that. So you can't hold me liable for anything. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna talk about today. We'll talk about our growth. We'll talk a little bit about CME, why we're here, what we do, how we do it, that sort of thing. And I'll try to focus on uh, platinum and palladium and then uh, bring you some knowledge about Clearport for, for those of you that are new to the industry or, or don't understand the, the platform. Okay, so if there's one thing I leave you with, it's this chart. It's this, these, these uh, records that we've had just for the month of August. And as you can see, it stems all of our futures and options products here at the CME Exchange, right? So, everywhere from gold, which is our biggest contract here, platinum, palladium, even steel, futures and options. We've had records in either the volume and or the open interest, so the size of the market. So we've been quite fortunate that we've had a great business. Overall, year to date, we're up 30% over last year at this time. Last year, we finished 40% over the year before. So we're continuing to see significant growth. I like to mention that, you know, people that, that haven't had a lot of exposure to commodities. I think when you turn on CNBC today, and we have those screens all over the building, I think three or four years ago, you had so much more on equity products, what was going on in the equity world. Today, when you have CNBC, it's a lot about commodities. It's a lot about grains. It's a lot about energy, crude oil, nat gas, gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. Where are those markets going? What are they doing? How are they, how are they affecting us? So I think it's, it's changed quite a, way, quite a bit, and we've gotten a lot of attention. So my first chart, here we go. Uh, this is specifically on platinum and palladium. Uh, you can see the growth, especially in the, the last part here from let's say August 2010 to, to where we are now. Um, I'll give you that number. So uh, last year at this time, our average daily contract, was, our average daily volume was 3,368 contracts. This August, 8,177 contracts. So it's an increase of 143%, right? And I, uh, Palladium was up 52%, and the options are just as high. And I can tell you it's true for, for all of our other metals products as well. So Platinum Palladium still under the NYMEX. Some of the, I think those are our oldest metals contracts, right from the 1950s and 1960s. There's some of our, there's some of our smaller ones, especially when you compare to gold and silver, but certainly very, very significant for us. COMEX, gold, silver, copper, you look at gold up top there, so significant growth here, right? People are looking to, to trade gold, you know, as they look for uh, a flight to safety, they look for hedge against the dollar, look for interest rate hedges, they look for all different ways of trying to benefit from, from using this contract. That statistic is even more astonishing, right? Uh, the average daily volume for August was 278,548 contracts. Last August, it was 99,000 contracts. So that's a 180% increase in our volume, right? And this is global. We, we're seeing participants from all over the world that are taking benefit of using these contracts here. And you can see silver and copper also up in that significant, well, not as significant, but up also. This is, the, this is just another bar chart, so you can see Certainly, gold is the green um, where that stands. So a little bit about CME Group. You're in the NYMEX building, as I still like to call it. I'm called Legacy NYMEX because I was here before CME Group bought us, right? Um, and NYMEX was bought by CME Group in uh, 2008. Um, we had actually our metals contracts listed on the electronic trading platform of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange um, before that, right? So we saw growth electronically before they actually bought us. So when they bought us, they bought, um, oops, I'm sorry, they bought us, they bought the energy and metals complex, right? Because we have crude oil and that gas, heating oil, all the power contracts. 
But they had also bought the CBOT, the Chicago Board of Trade, before us in 2006. So with that, they had the grains, right, and some of the meats and whatnot. And they were always the financial powerhouse with the S&Ps, interest rates, bonds, and, and all those other financial products. So within that, you know, this is a nice, a nice pictorial, I think, of some of the core products that CME has under one umbrella. We trade 98% of the futures and options in this country. So if you're trading futures and options, you're trading CME. All right, this is where people come. And these are the products. So I think if you're, if you're in that market, you know, an efficient, effective way, if you're a commercial, if you're, if you're a, a hedger, if you've got FX exposure, you've got interest rate exposure, you've got nat gas exposure, you've got gold exposure, this is one place to be efficient, right, and, and to use your collateral well under one umbrella. So I broke down a little bit um, the metals contracts here for those that are perhaps new to the industry or, or don't know quite as much. Gold, as you see, we leverage very highly. We've uh, got a few extensions on the gold contract specifically. We just listed the short-term short gold options contract that's doing very, very well. It uh, expires every day and it allows you to enter the market in a cost-effective way because you're only dealing with a, a, day, a day's exposure and so the fees and the margins and all are reflective of that. Uh, we've got our half size. We also have a 10 ounce gold contract specifically for the retail industry. You've got uh, much lower margins, much lower fees. If you want exposure in a 10 ounce way, you can do that. And we listed a, a VIX futures and options also, which uh, can help with the volatility uh, in all these markets today. Silver, we've got certainly a silver futures in our options. We've got a half size. We've got copper. That is our, our flagship base metals contract. It's a small domestic contract, but it does excellent. Uh, we've gone from 20, 25,000 contracts a day to over 40,000 contracts a day, right? The connectivity that we have on Globex has allowed participation on a global basis. So we're very pleased with that's how, how that's performed. And of course, platinum and palladium, right? Futures, we do have a pit here, but as you know, 90% or more of our futures contracts are actually uh, transacted on Globex now. Uh, the options, however, are a little different. Options, with the exception of platinum and palladium, maybe 50% on the floor and 50% on the screen. But platinum and palladium options are available only on Clearport, right? So they're more brokered than anything else. It's not really execution for, for those two products. And, and I'll get a little bit more into Clearport and how that works. Um, a little later on. So why are we here? People come here, they come here for price discovery and they come here for price risk management, for hedging, right? You've got uh, our prices which are transparent. These are prices by which you can execute, which you can buy and sell. These are not indications of where the market is. This is where you buy and sell, right? And those prices are determined by you, the participants, you, the ones that are buying and selling. And that's what we published globally, instantaneously, uh, through our relationships with Dow Jones and Bloomberg and, and Wall Street Journal, all the, all the, other, all the, uh, the agencies that we have. And hedging, right? People that are looking to get rid of risk, be it financial risk, counterparty risk, this is where you can come and we'll be the other side, right? So what we offer are open, fair, and anonymous trading, right? Nobody knows who you are. Everybody has access. Everybody can get access to Globex. Everybody can execute, right? We deal mainly with our FCMs, our futures clearing merchant, and you would deal with them or deal with a broker that eventually has a clearing relationship with them. Um, as I said, our prices are transparent open to everybody, and it's, and it's this transparent prices, this, this, this very liquid, uh, deep books that al allow for, for tight bid-ask sprays that allow you to participate and do large positions, do large amounts of trading in a very short amount of time. So this, this slide relates a lot to what I call the, the backbone of the exchange, which is the clearing house, right? They're the ones that are able to guarantee every single trade that comes through this building and our Globex, our trading matching engine, and the building in Chicago, right? We have built a, a system by which we have 62, three uh, FCMs, uh, futures clearing mer merchants, which are, you know, the biggest banks in the world, the biggest companies in the world that have posted money here. Right? We have a, a, a clearing house with $8 billion in safeguards and over $100 billion in, in other financial uh, collateral here should anything go wrong. I think what serves, uh, speaks volume for, um, 
for the clearinghouse is that we've never had a failure. Despite what's going on or what's happened in a lot of the markets, the disappearance of Lehman and Bear Stearns and Refco's, you know, all that has never disrupted our markets here. And we strive to make them orderly. Here's a little bit uh, chart, just a little bit about our expansion and, and how we look to grow in the markets. I think if senior management had a, a do-over on where their people stood, I don't think 80% of them would be in Chicago. Right? I think as we look at where the markets are going, where pricing is moving, where uh, purchasing and selling of materials is happening, we look at Asia, I mean, we've got a significant uh, office in that part of the world, and we're building relationships there. We've got uh, South America, we've got a huge relationship with the BMNF exchange there in Mexico, in Dubai, in Malaysia. We're always looking for where we can be, where we can have our strategic relationships to grow our business, and we want to be a step ahead. So I think there certainly will be more to come. So who's in our markets? Um, we, and we have a growing, as I showed you before, growing amount of participants that are in our markets. I think investors or speculators, as they're often called, sometimes get a bad rap, right? These, these are the people that are taking advantage of price movements in our markets, but what they do is they add a lot of liquidity. They are someone that's on the other side that has a different perspective on where prices are going, and we need those people. It takes two people to make a market, right? So some of those are certainly fund managers, hedge funds, prop firms, individual traders, some of our banks also. Uh, they need to be in our markets. They're vital to, to, to our volume here and to the liquidity and to the bid ask. That, uh, that makes it competitive for you guys. And the commercial hedger. This is why these markets started in the, in the first place, right? Agricultural products in the 1800s, right? Uh, some of the markets here came a little later, but we're here for price risk management. We're here for the commercial that wants to be able to lay off some risk, wants to be able to price fix forward, wants to be able to have counterparty credit risk uh, removed from his transaction. This is the place where they can come and do that. Welcome to the world of CME Clearport, a flexible, comprehensive set of clearing services available for over-the-counter markets. Whether you're a trader, a CFO, an FCM, a planned sponsor, or a hedge fund manager, trading in OTC markets exposes you to risk, and CME Clearport can help you mitigate that risk without changing the way you trade. Here's how it works. In a traditional OTC transaction, the buyer and seller come together directly or through an intermediary. They may negotiate privately and agree to a contract that benefits both of them. That contract might be for a credit default swap, crude oil, currency, or hundreds of other products. It's up to the buyer and seller to assess each other's credit and manage the flow of cash between them. In the event one party defaults, all of its counterparties may be exposed to losses. Here's where CME Clearport can help. CME Clearport brings to OTC markets some benefits of exchanged traded futures contracts, most importantly a clearinghouse, CME Clearing, that acts as a central counterparty. With CME Clearport, each party puts up a performance bond, often called a margin, that helps to secure its performance obligations. The collateral posted with each counterparty's clearing firm is protected. The clearing firm and other third parties can't access that collateral and use it for their own purposes. Each day, CME Clearing uses a twice-daily process called Mark to Market to value the cleared contract. If the contract goes up or down in value, the clearinghouse can require additional margin. Many buyers and sellers prefer CME Clearport's valuations because CME Clearing is independent. It acts as a neutral party in setting settlement valuations for all cleared contracts. In the event of a default, customer accounts may be transferred to a non-defaulting clearing firm and CME Clearing's financial safeguard package may be accessed. In fact, CME Clearing has been clearing transactions for more than a century without a clearing member failure. That's why we can offer a wide array of clearing services, from block trades and EFPs to sub-trades to pure OTC clearing. Whatever your needs, CME Clearport can help you mitigate your risk. It adds up to greater security and more certainty, because in today's market, it pays to be sure. 
Okay, so I, I hope that was, you know, simplified enough. The idea, this started uh, as a NYMEX uh, service with the, with the collapse of the, the energy, with Enron collapsing and Duke and all the energy companies that still needed to trade, right, but didn't have any counterparty trust in anyone, right? And at the time, I think we benefited from uh, the Commoditization Act, and we had a president here that, 2002, yeah, we had the, for the, uh, yeah, we had a president here that was ex uh, the energy world and um, basically leveraged our clearinghouse to make sure that we could, that energy world could continue, and it's particularly in that gas. And that gas is still the strongest product that's cleared on CME, CME Clearport, right? And this is allowing you to continue to do your business, right? And to bring it here, and you get a futures contract, and we guarantee it. It's margined as a futures contract. Uh, it's significant. We've got over a thousand products on Clearport now. Majority of them energy, but we've put on different products. We have all the metals products on CME Clearport. And I want to bring out to this audience that, again, that the, the platinum and palladium options are only on Clearport. And that volume has really gone through the roof. So we're very excited. I know Carlos is here with PVM. So I don't know if he's going to touch on that because he's a broker and hopefully in that space. Right, so uh, some of you are, are learning to use it and, and seeing the, the, the ability and what it can do for your business as far as continuing to trade, as far as extending your credit line with customers when you can't trade anymore, or not having the, the issue of counterparty credit risk. I think this is a great service, a great tool that uh, if you're not familiar with it in your business, can add significant value. All right, so, so just a, a rehash of, of just some of the benefits that, you know, mitigating your risk. Uh, we have independent valuations here. We settle these contracts every day. Uh, it's certainly anonymous. Uh, we just report um, uh, volume and open interest and put out a settlement curves on these prices. It's completely anonymous the same way that Globex is, right? It's OTC transactions. This is post-execution, right? So just continuing to do your business the way you've always done it. So I'm going to leave you with, um, I think, just for your reference, I think you, you guys all know what the platinum, palladium, futures, and options contracts uh, look like. But, you know, some of the, 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 the attributes, I think, what's, and, you know, some of our speakers have already touched on that and on what, why people are focusing on platinum and palladium. You know, it does have that dual role as a precious metal and an industrial metal, and I think that supply-demand story for those products. Are, are very sound, so it brings in a lot of participants that want to extend that gold play. I think gold for a lot of people uh, is a very, it's, it is, it's a very mature market, uh, and it's very populated. So if you're looking for some place that isn't as, uh, as crowded and has opportunity there because it has those precious metals attributes, uh, we've seen a lot of new growth in our platinum and palladium products. And I've left there some uh, some records there specifically for platinum options. If you look at our daily volume, our open interest that has grown, and our palladium options, as I said, only on Clearport. And these, they're trading very, very nicely. I brought, I brought this last chart here just to give you an idea of when um, our trading is done. Although our products are on uh, Globex, which is open virtually 24 hours a day, our products, and this is true for all the metals products, still trade with the floor hours. So we see there's very much this bell curve at 8 a.m. and then come up, and then at 1 p.m., 1.30, start to slope off. And we struggle, and something that we're working on very, very hard is to bring liquidity, bring that same depth of market in our extended trading hours, especially as we see, you know, some of our customers uh, in, the Asian, in the Asian part of the world. So it's something that we're, we're trying to, to help build. And um, this is our, our education uh, website. I urge you to take a look at that. It's got a huge amount of information. We've got commentary. We've got strategies. We've got all sorts of information there um, for you to take a look at. So there you go. And some of our contacts, and I think our presentations will be made public. So if you want to reach any of us at any time, we're certainly available. I thank you very much. <laughs>